Hello everyone. We are recording these training videos to help researchers get started with coding. Now in this specific video, I'm going to try to make a case for why you need to learn to code and why Python. In the upcoming tutorials, I'm going to introduce you to the concept of uh, digital image. I'm pretty sure most of you already know. And uh, uh, an understanding of what a digital image definitely helps us in understanding Python because we're going to use Python to manipulate these digital images, which is nothing but image processing using Python. So for all of these videos, uh, well, at least for the uh, beginning ones, the assumption is you have uh, no experience in Python. And the hope is you'll overcome the fear after seeing these uh, first few training videos. So let me go ahead and start by introducing myself. Now, my name is Srini. I'm part of uh, Digital Solutions at Zeiss and uh, at work. I work with a great team who is focused on leveraging the latest digital technologies to make uh, a researcher's or a microscopist's uh, life or work life more efficient. Now, on a personal time, I enjoy cooking and teaching and, of course, learning about new technologies so I can be better at teaching. So let me now start making the case for uh, why you need to learn to code. Now, most of you probably saw this image from a couple of years ago where this lady reconstructed this image of black hole using uh, a bunch of code. So all she did was use coding to extract information uh, from data. And I'm pretty sure most of you relate to this. You're exactly doing this as a researcher or as a microscopist. You're looking at a bunch of data, some of it is in the image form, some of it is in the fluorescence image form, which is again fluorescence signal. Uh, and and you're, if you're a material scientist, you're probably looking at spectroscopy data in addition to imaging data, but you're trying to uh, bring some meaning to it and put it in a uh, form that we all can understand. So the reason why she could was able to do that is obviously she uh, knew how to code. Of course, there was no software uh, to designed to visualize uh, black holes. So she had to write the code. So most probably there's no software completely customized for your specific application, right? Designed to do exactly what you're trying to do, which means you have to extend the capability of existing great software, whether it is ImageJ or Zen, to further customize it to what uh, to do what exactly you're trying to do. So for that, you absolutely need coding. And you probably think coding is hard. It's not your cup of tea. I was in that boat a while ago. I thought, well, it's not my thing. I understand physics. I understand materials and other stuff. But coding is not for me. Uh, but Python completely changed the game. It made coding very easy. And in addition, what I learned while I was teaching myself how to code was coding made me self-sufficient. Yeah, I don't have to rely on anything else because I know I can code. I want to search all the files on my uh, hard drive for something. Uh, I, I can write a code myself to do that task. And it teaches you how to think. Uh, obviously, if I want to write a, a piece of code to do some task, we'll have to think about how to structure it. So it definitely helps you uh, uh, think better. Uh, and it improves your collaboration skills, of course, because uh, uh, you will get stuck at some point and you have to work with others to figure out what the solution is, whether the others are your partners in your lab and research or they are someone online uh, you know, who's trying to help everyone. So uh, you, it will definitely improve your collaboration skills. And of course, uh, it, it takes your career to new heights. Now, uh, if you really want to stay, again, this may be uh, pushing, uh, pushing the limit, uh, meaning, meaning uh, this statement may be a bit too aggressive, but there is truth to this which is uh, there may be 10,000 plus, let's say, life scientists or even more or material scientists or geologists, but what separates you from the rest of the folk? Well, obviously, you are probably much better at uh, preparing your samples, much better at interpreting your results, but coding also adds to those skills. Now, finally, why Python? Let me actually use seven reasons, but there are many reasons uh, why Python, but uh, the primary reason is it's uh, beginner friendly. It's very easy to code advanced algorithms, including artificial intelligence and uh, uh, machine learning algorithms in uh, Python, even for beginners. And it's free, of course, which means you can, in, uh, you can uh, download it. It's very accessible. And talking about accessibility, you can put it on any system. If you uh, love to work on Windows or Mac or Linux, it's very easy to get uh, started with Python. And stable libraries. 
this is one of the primary reasons Python is growing very fast and the community is growing because there are a lot of stable libraries already available for most tasks, whether you're in financial sector, biology, life sciences, or even humanities trying to understand the sentiment of a given uh, text, you have libraries for those. So for imaging, OpenCV and Scikit-Image and Keras for deep learning, these are all great libraries that are available and you can do many advanced tasks with these libraries. And uh, active open source community. This is uh, again, one of the amazing things about Python. Uh, you ask a question online, there are many places to do that. There are people uh, willing to answer right away. And uh, uh, I mean, which, which is my next point, actually excellent community support, but I think these two go hand in hand. Open source community, again, you can go to GitHub and you can search for something, you'll find code for what, what, what you are trying to, uh, what you're trying to achieve. And finally, I'd like to end, uh, well, it's uh, probably uh, not, uh, not ending on the right motivation because as researchers, we are all motivated by finding something new. But of course, part of the motivation also includes paying well and Python engineers uh, uh, have some of the highest salaries. And I'm, I'm, uh, I live in the San Francisco Bay Area and I can tell you that I see a lot of Python engineers who work at very reputed organizations, whether they are uh, technology companies or uh, biotech companies, uh, Python definitely helped improve uh, at least many people's careers. And I hope it will also improve or add an additional skill to your, uh, to your portfolio. So let's get started. And uh, starting from the next tutorial, I'm gonna focus on, again, as I mentioned, uh, explaining what a digital image is and then uh, slowly introducing the basics of Python. So I hope uh, you're motivated enough to learn to code. So let's uh, meet in the next tutorial by talking about digital images. Thank you very much.